Welcome you all to Oral Medicine and Radiology Made Easy. In this video, let us discuss about hand, foot and mouth disease. Hand, foot and mouth disease or HFMD is a common childhood disease characterized by brief febrile illness, typical vascular rashes on the palms, soles or buttocks and oropharyngeal ulcers. So this is a viral disease which involves hands, foot and mouth. It was first reported in New Zealand in the year 1957. It is considered to be a benign disease of self-limiting nature and it affects children under age of 10 years old. So usually it is seen in small children. The causative organism belongs to the enterovirus family. The most common ones are Coxsackie virus A16, A4 to A7, 9 and 10 and enterovirus type 71. So the most common viruses which belongs to enterovirus family which causes hand, foot and mouth disease are Coxsackie virus A16, 4 to 7, 9 and 10 and enterovirus type 71. So the infection usually occurs by fecooral route leading to viremia and invasion of the skin and mucosa. The initial viral invasion is in the oral mucosa and the ileal mucosa of intestine and is followed by a spread to regional lymph nodes within 24 hours. The virus enters through the fecooral route leading to viremia and invasion of the skin and the mucosa. The first place the virus invades is the oral mucosa and ileal mucosa or intestinal mucosa and from there it spreads to the regional lymph nodes within 24 hours and the incubation period of this virus is usually 3 to 7 days. So what are the clinical features? As with other viral diseases, it has a prodromal phase which consists of low grade fever, malaise, sore throat, cough, abdominal pain, difficulty to eat, sore mouth and myalgia. Usually skin of the hands and feet along with oral mucosa are involved. The rashes in the hands and the feet usually follow the oral ulcers. So the first lesions appear in the oral cavity and then hands and feet. The skin lesions are characterized by the presence of numerous erythematous macules or papules in the initial stage on the palms and hands and soles of the feet and sometimes also on the buttocks and genitalia. Skin lesions appear as erythematous either macule or papule and then these papules evolve into superficial vesicles within few days and form mainly on the palms and soles. As you can see in this picture the lesions erythematous macules form mainly on the palms and soles. Here also you can see how it is formed on the palm and sole. Here you can see small blisters formed on the hands and around the lips and also an ulcer on the lip. So generally they appear in crops and persist in groups over some specific areas like hand, feet, perioral area, knees, buttocks and also intraorally. So here you can see how they appear in the form of crops. Lesions in thick skin like palms and soles may not develop classical vesicle but they may instead persist as erythematous papules. The lesions are elliptical with the long axis running parallel to the skin lines and may be asymptomatic or painful. So the lesions which appear on the skin may be either asymptomatic or it may be painful and they slowly disappear over 5 to 10 days without scarring. So hand, foot and mouth disease does not result in scarring. Coming to the oral manifestations, patients complain of pain, sore throat and dysphagia that is difficulty in swallowing. Multiple vesicles and ulcers may be seen affecting any part of the oral mucosa and the ulcers that are formed are shallow, they are painful and small in size. The common sites are tongue, buccal mucosa and heart palate. So the most common site where the vesicles or ulcers are seen in case of hand, foot and mouth disease are 
tongue, buccal mucosa and hard palate though they may involve any part of the oral mucosa, but most common site is tongue, buccal mucosa and hard palate. The gingiva are rarely involved. Oral lesions resolve without treatment in one week. The diagnosis of this disease is purely based on clinical features. You do not need to do any invasive investigations to diagnose hand, foot and mouth disease. Just based on the clinical features, it is easy to diagnose a case of hand, foot and mouth disease. The differential diagnosis that can be considered are chicken pox, herpangina, acute herpetic stomatitis and minor arthritis ulcers. Chicken pox is also a viral disease. Here it presents with papules turning into vesicles, but it involves most of the part of the body and not just limited to hand, foot and mouth and the involvement of the thick skin of hand and sole is less common in chicken pox compared to hand, foot and mouth disease. Herpangina is also a viral disease, but it involves predominantly the posterior one third of the oral cavity, whereas hand, foot and mouth disease involves the other parts of the oral cavity. Acute herpetic stomatitis is another viral disease. It more commonly affects the gingiva whereas hand, foot and mouth disease affects mainly the other parts of the oral cavity and less commonly involves gingiva. Minor aphthous ulcerations does not involve multiple sites like hands and feet. They involve few sites of the oral cavity and hence they can be differentiated from hand, foot and mouth disease. The treatment, there is neither an effective antiviral therapy nor an effective vaccine available against the disease. So, the treatment is purely supportive and symptomatic. If the patient has fever, antipyrectics are given to control fever and the patient may have itching over the lesions. So, antihistamines are given to reduce itching and topical local anesthetics can be prescribed for oral ulcers to improve the patient's ability to consume a routine diet. Coxsackie virus infections are usually self-limiting and improve spontaneously after 7 to 10 days without any complication. But in rare cases, these patients may also develop neurological complications such as encephalomyelitis, aseptic meningitis and acute flaccid paralysis. These are the some of the rare complications seen because of hand, foot and mouth disease. As this is a contagious disease and has the potentiality to spread very fast over a large population in the community, prevention of further spread of the disease is the only way to control the disease from becoming a large outbreak. So, in order to prevent the spread of the disease, we have to follow strict implementation of basic protocols like monitoring the cleanliness of the hands, utensils and drinking water and avoiding direct contact with the affected people can be rewarding. Restriction of the affected children from attending the school or other outdoor activities is a very simple but effective strategy to prevent the spread of the infection. So, to recap, hand, foot and mouth disease is a viral disease commonly seen in small children. It is caused because of the virus belonging to the enterovirus family like Coxsackie virus. It is mainly transmitted through fecal-oral route. It enters the oral mucosa or the ileal mucosa and then spreads to the lymph node and then manifests in the skin and the oral cavity. Initially, the patient may have prodromal symptoms like fever, malaise, sore throat and then the lesion starts to appear in the oral cavity, hands and feet. The lesions resolve within a week and usually do not require any invasive investigations to diagnose disease and the treatment is mainly supportive and prevention of further spread of the disease is the best way to control the disease from becoming a large outbreak. With this, we come to the end of this video. Thank you.